Welcome back to Get Down to Business, the show all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. I've been very excited by this conversation. I'm thrilled to be joined by Ron Ross, the co-founder, president, and chief operating officer of Every, um, who is helping to put an end to two-week pay cycles for good. That sounds pretty exciting to me. Ron is the president, co-founder, chief operating officer of, of, of Every, a payroll and business payments platform that's disrupting the two-week payment cycle. He has over 25 years of experience leading software as a service businesses uh, and consumer brands. We'll talk all about our, Ron's background, but Ron, welcome to the program. Thanks, Shalom. It's a pleasure to have you. So Ron, um, you know, in reading about your background, you have uh, quite a, a bit of uh, history over here. I'm curious what led you into this world of, I believe you spend most of your time in the world of, call it finance. Um, and how did you end up in that? And how did that lead into the payroll world? Uh, great question. You know, my, my background is uh, I've uh, been a CFO a few times over. So accounting finance is where I spent most of my professional career. Um, it was in the last company that I was in before I, I started Every, where I discovered uh, this, this problem around payroll. And it started when uh, it was in the summer of 2017, when my daughter Eliza left home uh, to go to college. And she moved away. It was about a half hour away from where we live. And she was living off campus and she had a job and she was making enough to pay her bills. However, she kept coming to me month after month for these uh, short term loans. And really what I discovered back then was there was this interesting mismatch in timing uh, between when her bills were coming due and uh, when she was getting paid. And it was a problem that I just kept thinking, thinking about over and over again, um, how, you know, the pay cycle and the mismatch in timing when, when uh, employees work and when they get paid causes a lot of problems for uh, employees that live paycheck to paycheck. And my daughter, she, she doesn't like me sharing that. I think she feels like she did something wrong. She, she didn't do anything wrong. I think it's uh, something that most uh, US workers face. In fact, uh, um, stats show that it's about 68% of US workers live paycheck to paycheck like my daughter was at that time. Um, and so a lot of people run into that problem. Yeah, no question about it. Um, you know, the majority of people are indeed uh, dealing with this uh, challenge, and I love the story um, of how it sort of inspired you. So, you know, we, we can go in so many different directions, and we'll have an opportunity to cover them all. But let's talk about that, uh, that entrepreneurship side of things. You know, from yeah. from you sort of identifying the need and and launching this business, you've certainly uh, grown it many many times in size. Your team is now five times the size. You've mm -hmm. raised um, seed and Series A uh, financing rounds totaling fourteen million dollars. Um, in April 2019 and 2020, respectively. What has that experience been like? And what maybe advice do you have for fellow entrepreneurs that might be tuning in, sort of facing a similar challenge of having a great idea, but having to find a way to make it a reality? Uh, yeah, and for me, it was particularly hard because, um, you know, I going all the way back to when I was in school, uh, in my, I, I did an MBA program. And uh, during that MBA program, uh, there was a class I took in entrepreneurship and the instructor would bring in each week a new entrepreneur and they would tell their story. And I just became very fascinated with the idea of entrepreneurship. Um, however, for me, I'm more of an introvert. And so I saw these bigger than life personalities um, that were entrepreneurs and I just didn't feel like it was a fit for me. And so I always felt like I would play more of a supporting role. Uh, supporting cast in, in a startup. And that's what I did for most of my professional career. You know, I, I left my MBA program after I finished and went into accounting for a short stint in public accounting and then jumped into my first startup. And then for me, what I found was helpful is that each company that I, I went to, and there were um, five companies in total, I progressively went into earlier and earlier stage businesses and in doing that, I became more and more familiar with the problems that early stage businesses face. And uh, towards the end of it, it just became uh, more comfortable for me to be in that environment. And so the idea of starting a business on my own became less scary. 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're in a perfect perch, um, you know, being a business owner yourself, you understand that mismatch that you referred to earlier talking about your daughter um, of, you know, sort of how companies typically, you know, use a payroll service, one of the big names out there. Um, some of them have acronyms and some of them might rhyme with uh, HX. Um, but uh, I'm curious, why does the payroll industry still support that sort of outdated pay cycle that's causing, you know, folks like your daughter and, and countless more to have to borrow money from their parents? You know, that's, that's a great question. Uh, it started around in the, in the 1940s where um, Congress created an act that required businesses to begin withholding taxes from their employees to remit that to the government. And, you know, over time, uh, that began the, the process of uh, having to withhold the, the taxes and do all the calculations became cumbersome. And so businesses started to outsource that. And you would have expected like in the 80s when software began to be more prevalent that that would improve and speed things up. However, it didn't. It's it sort of set in as a norm, the, the two week or um, twice a month pay cycle, a semi monthly pay cycle. It set in as a norm. And what I found in the early days as I was looking into, um, you know, why the payroll cycle exists, um, I discovered a, um, a, a secret or, or um, what I would consider a, a little unknown secret in the payroll world mm -hmm. that um, payroll companies actually benefit off of moving slow. If you go to any public payroll companies, uh, 10Q or 10K, which is their public filings, it's when they file their financial statements, you'll see a line in their revenue sure. section that says interest income. So um, what they do yeah. is they actually hold on to- Well, well Ron, I, we're gonna continue that conversation. Okay. Ron, we're going we're gonna to continue that piece and actually uh, dive into that secret that these payroll companies have and why, again, your team is uh, cracking the code and doing amazing things. Sure. Um, we'll be right back uh, with Ron Ross from Every when we get back and get down to business. Welcome back to Get Down to Business, the show all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. I'm back with the one and only Ron Ross, president and COO of every payroll platform that eases the payroll process for both employers and employees. And just prior to the break, Ron was telling us something that maybe some of the traditional payroll uh, industry and companies uh, don't want us to know. Ron, um, uh, bringing you back in. Uh, again, thanks for joining us on Get Down to Business. Again, why are payroll companies sort of motivated to work slowly? Sure. I guess there was a little bit of a cliffhanger there. So let's get back into that. Uh, yeah, it's a dirty little secret that most people don't know. Um, when you look at payroll as a process, what these larger payroll companies do is they will sit on the money that's, that's pulled from companies' accounts, uh, you know, meant to be distributed to employees and taxing authorities. They'll sit on it and they'll invest that money and earn interest off of it. And Again, when you go back to, or when you look at any public company, public payroll companies, financial statements, you'll see a, a line in their revenue section that says interest income. And this is the income that they're, they're um, receiving off of investing that money that they're sitting on. So they're incentivized to move slow. And I found that it distasteful. Um, you know, it, it's an, a disincentive for them um, to move things fast. And we just view things differently at every, we want to get employees their pay as fast as possible. And so we don't sit on any of the deposits. In fact, we, we get them, um, the employees paid instantly or within the same day. And so we move much faster than regular payroll companies do. Well, definitely one of the key takeaways that we're going to have is getting our listeners in touch with you and your team at Every, which we'll do in just a moment. But Ron, while we just have one minute remaining in our conversation, um, I am curious if you were to uh, sort of look at your crystal ball and look at the payroll industry. Um, obviously, Every, you are uh, you are very focused on on a very innovative approach. What are some of the things you're expecting, perhaps, if we were to ta if we were to have this conversation in 2028? Yeah, it's been fascinating for me. So. Uh, every we I started it about five years ago with some co-founders, um, and over that time period, we've seen a lot of things change uh, in the expectations around uh, when employees get paid and the speed in which they get paid. And I think uh, 
we've seen that driven um, by the gig workforce and the, the gig marketplace and how that's evolving. And, you know, currently there's 59, 60 million gig workers out there, which accounts for roughly 40% of the U.S. workforce. And the expectation in that market is that they get paid when they finish a job or finish a delivery. Um, and so the expectations around the speed to pay are starting to change. And that's starting to bleed into the rest of the workforce. So fast forward, you know, um, call it a decade from now, I expect that workers are gonna, gonna wanna be paid faster and that's gonna uh, change the way we think about payroll. And um, wow, fantastic. that's my expectation. When you look at technology in general, it always moves to real time. And I can think of many examples of that. And I think pay is gonna be similar and the, the expectation around that sure. is going to move to real time. Well, Ron, I'm looking forward to having you back on because I know we're going to be following this and this is something that impacts every single business owner and every single employee. Um, so we need to follow this carefully. But Ron, as promised, we want to make sure our listeners get in touch with you and your team at Every. How can we do that? Sure. They can go to every.com and that's spelled E-V-E-R-E-E.com. Or you can find me and our company on LinkedIn or if you go to EveryPay uh, on uh, Twitter or Facebook, EveryPay is the handle. Fantastic. Ron Ross, thank you so much for sharing your expertise, your crystal ball um, forecast of the payroll industry and why, again, Every is uh, making a difference for uh, employees and employers all over the world. We'll certainly have you back on real soon. It's been a great show today. We've had some great folks on sharing their expertise on everything small business jobs and entrepreneurship. But the best way for you to continue to be smarter um, in, uh, in everything that you do is to follow uh, our podcast um, where we have some just amazing, amazing guests on a weekly basis. Get down to business. You won't miss a single show. Go on your favorite podcast app, search for Get Down to Business, or go to my website, shellandkline.com. Subscribe, rate, review, and share. It makes it easier for others to find the show all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. To success, let's get down to business. We'll talk to you next Sunday at 6 p.m. right here on N560 The Answer. <laughs>